These days, they tell us that they will close down our FM radio stations here in Switzerland. Time to start a new venture. Digitalize our radios without spending too much money. I already some time ago started this venture with an ESP8266, but was not successful. I still have a box with a label ESP radio on my shelf. Today we will open it up and try to finalize this project with a bigger brother of the ESP8266. Or is it its bigger sister? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. This box stayed for more than a year on the shelf. Let's open it and look inside. It contains a module with an ES9023 and an ESP8266 development board. If we have a close look, the ESP module is decapped and I sorted a RAM chip Beaky pack on the flash chip. This was necessary because internet radio needs two things, speed and memory. And the ESP8266 did not have enough RAM. This is why I had to add it with this trick. We even find a do-it-yourself board with an ES9023. Obviously I planned to build my own board before I bought one. I did never finish this project because it only ran in Espressifs development environment and to my knowledge was never ported to Arduino. A colleague even built me a complete virtual machine with a full-blown Linux system and Espressifs development environment because I did not know Linux at this time. You see, these days were hard. But now, with the bad news for our FM stations and with a much more powerful ESP32, I am motivated to give it a second try. By the way, do you hear how a Swiss sounds when he is excited? The ES9023 used in the ESP8266 radio is a premier stereo digital to analog converter. It uses I2S signals as input. Please do not mix I2S with I2C. These two protocols are not compatible. While I2C is used by many of our sensors, I2S is mainly used in audio applications. And because the ESP chips have a high-speed I2S interface, it can be misused for all sorts of experiments. Maybe we can still use this board for our radio? Let's search for an ESP32 radio project. Maybe we can stand on somebody else's shoulders and save some time. And really, I found a GitHub repository for such a radio project. It seems to be alive. The last commit was last week. The feature list is long, much longer than expected. Who would wait to read the word MQTT in an internet radio project? If I read right, it seems to be possible to remote control our receiver from our home automation system using MQTT. This must be the new age of digitalization they promise in all newspapers and everywhere else. Now I'm interested. Or how do you call the next step after excited? This seems to be a full grown project. And it has all I need, up to 100 preset stations. It can play stations up to 320 kilobits per second and has a color display. And even can be remotely controlled by infrared. I must build this. But it does not use the ES9023 board anymore. It uses a different concept. The ESP8266 was also used to decode MP3. Here they use a VS1053 chip to do that. The chip uses the SPI, not the I2S bus. Fortunately, I have such a board in my old project box. Maybe it was already then an idea to offload the ESP from number crunching. With the displays, however, I'm not so sure. This project uses the TFT ILI 9163C library, but my LCDs seem to use different chips. Maybe I have to change the library or order another display. Looking at the documentation, it appears that Ed, the developer, used the same screens I have. So let's start. The VS1053 board needs 5 volts, 
and one of the displays can be used on 3.3 or 5 volts. The backlight is only at 3.3. So for the moment we have to power our radio with 5 volts. I would love to use one of these new ESP32 boards with a big display and a battery. But unfortunately they do not expose the SPI pins for our VS1053 board. And I'm also not sure if the library would work on these boards. It would be cool if some of our Chinese suppliers would add a VS1053 chip to such a board. Then we would have a very compact and cheap internet radio. So we have to use a standard ESP32 development board with all pins exposed. The wiring is not straightforward. Fortunately the code is well documented and we find a table with the needed pins. It uses hardware SPI to get maximum speed. The SPI bus is much faster than the I2C bus and the hardware SPI is much quicker than software SPI. And this seems to be necessary for our today's project. The SPI bus consists of up to 5 wires. SCK, the clock signal. MOSI, the signal in one direction. MISO, the signal in the other direction. These three wires can be used to connect many devices in parallel. Today we have the display and the VS1053 boards in parallel. And we could add also the SD card reader to the same bus. But how do these devices know which data is for which device? The devices on the I2C bus all have addresses for that purpose. Too slow for the SPI bus. It uses a chip select or CS signal. Each device has its own select signal as we can see here. Chip select for the VS1053 board is GPIO5 and for the display GPIO15. Like that the ESP32 can choose with whom it wants to communicate for the moment. We also see that the display does not need MISO because it only receives data. Today I will not wire the SD card because I do not need an MP3 player on my radio. The last pin which belongs somehow to the SPI interface is the reset pin. Here we wire all reset pins together. If we press the button on the ESP all three devices are reset together. Also we can connect a rotary encoder. Long time viewers know that I like this kind of user interface. For the first prototype I use DuPont cables. For the one to one connections I use prefabricated wires. If I have to connect more than one pin, for example ground or VCC, I cut cables, wire them together and protect it with heat shrink tubes. To keep the distances short I use the 10 cm variety. This makes sure I do not lose too much voltage and do not create too much noise. If you are interested in this topic you see now a link in the right top corner to a video about it. As expected a lot of wiring is necessary. I always use colors and write the colors down in the documentation. Here you see that I'm left handed as many good American presidents but was forced to write with my right hand like President Reagan and Truman. So no need for comments about my handwriting. Such a table with the colors make it easy to check everything before switching the device on and also later for debugging. I write all pins in the configuration part of the sketch so I do not need to enter them later on with a web interface. The radio expects additional variables in non-volatile storage or NVS. We can enter these values in esp underscore radio underscore init dot ino. It transfers all constants into NVS. Finally I can start the radio sketch and plug in a headset into the jack to listen. Remember this is my first time I listen to my internet radio. I offer you the second headset for listening. The display starts and it connects to my Wi-Fi network and really we hear the music. Cool, it works. And look which radio we listen to. We listen to Gaia radio. This brings my thesis work to my mind where as a preparatory work I had to read this small book written by James Lovelock. That apparently left a lasting impression on me. 
Unfortunately, I have no clue how the user interface on this radio works. Pressing once, the rotary encoder mutes the sound and pushing it again, it unmutes. But how to change the station? Let's try the web interface. I connect to the address of the radio and get a friendly looking web interface to adjust the station, the volume and other stuff. I can also configure the device and with an enabled SD card I could use it as an MP3 player. Fortunately, my studio monitor loudspeakers arrived yesterday and are not yet placed where they belong. Lucky you, we can now together listen to Swiss radio. Let's now try the rotary encoder. The manual says that I have to double click to change the station. And really, I can change it. The interface is not very fast, but it works. But what happens after I click the button again? The display becomes white and stays like that till I reboot the ESP. Not nice. I have to check the issues on GitHub. Such a problem should be recognized by others. No, I did not find any issue with this content. So I have to create a new one to get help from the developer. And really, after a short time, I got an answer. Not an encouraging one. I'm the only one with this problem. So definitely, the setup works at other places. Maybe the power supply? This could well be, because I did not pay too much attention to that topic and unstable power supplies can create all sorts of unlovely effects. Instead of the USB cable, I connect the 5V pins directly to the bench power supply and add a beefy capacitor across the power pins. The device consumes around 200 mA, which is not a lot. But this change does not help. What else? Do you remember my video about debugging? One rule was to exchange parts and check if the problem stays. I replaced the obvious one first, the display with one of the same make and later with a similar one but of a different make. No change. Ed suggests reducing the speed of the SPI. Also no difference. Next I check if the ESP32 board has an issue. I also replace it with a different one. No difference. Next I exchange the complete sketch with an example of the LCD library. It works like a charm. With two different sketches. Very strange. It is also odd that the ESP does not crash. Quite often with the, such problems our ESP crashes and we can go from there. Not so here. Even if the screen is white, I can remotely control it via web interface. The problem is most probably in the sketch itself. Maybe I am this most stupid user which is very valuable in software testing because he makes completely different mistakes as the developers. By the way, when I was young, this role was always assigned to our boss. Of course, nobody told him. And he was always proud when he found a bug. So, I have to experiment more to find the problem with the display later. In the meantime, we can check if it sends MQTT messages. Yes, I get messages whenever a new title is played, for example. And I think I could control the radio with MQTT messages. For the moment I do not need that. So we move on. Till I find the issue with the LCD I will use infrared. Only add an IR receiver diode and enter the pin in the configuration. You find a link in the top right corner if you are interested in how IR remote controls work. If you press a button on a remote, the transmitted code is shown in serial. Just add this code to the config file and next time the IR function works. Nice feature. By the way, you might ask yourself where I got the rotary switch and the IR receiver ready on these small PCBs. When I started my hobby, I bought myself this sensor kit. Always if I need one of those parts, I can take it from there. Of course, in the finished product, I will use standard parts and put these special ones back for the next usage. Now comes the disadvantage to be a nerd. I was not able to stop this video without finding the root cause for the white screen. I had to do some research and serial print statements and indeed found a bug. A simple 
if len bigger than one solved it. If you are interested in the conversation, how we search for the bug, you see my issue in Ed's project. You will also see a few other issues which are still open. And of course, also the project files and the well-prepared manual. I like this project. It uses nearly all features of the ESP32. If you have a close look, it even uses both CPU cores, including semaphores, and also the touch sensors. I think you can also learn a few things if you look at this code. It took me maybe too long to find this bug. Why is that? Because I answered the first question in debugging wrongly. Did it already work somewhere else? Ed's answer was, yes, it sits on my table and I use it every day. And there was no issue locked for this particular error. This is why I started to search the error in my setup, not in the code. Finally, we have a happy end. But the beautiful 3D printed housing, maybe with a small amplifier and a loudspeaker, has to wait until I have time again. And I'm pretty sure we can power everything from 3.3 volts. Then we could even do it in a portable setup. Maybe a project for you? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.